if you surround yourself with objects that have meaning, it enriches your life. So in my own practice in the studio, um, mugs are something, if I've been away from the studio for a while, I really like to start with mugs. Um, they're kind of a meditative form for me. Like the second I start to sit down and make mugs, I can start to generate the lists in my head of the things that need to get done in the studio. Um, and there's just a really nice meditative quality about making a board of pots. When I, so when I sit down to the wheel, I already have exactly what I'm gonna make in the head. I don't have a, um, the clay doesn't inform me about what it wants to be. I inform the clay about what it's going to be. Um, so I'm making mugs and these mugs have a very specific quality to them. I really am looking for the throwing lines sort of to replicate my, like the inspiration for these are tin cans, like dented tin cans. I have a difficult relationship with the word artist. Uh, and so I think when uh, I found clay, it allowed me to find my creativity um, and have an outlet for it. You know, I've become more and more comfortable with the term artist. Um, it also I feel sometimes is, uh, is a word that has a, a lot of negative connotation with it. It means unemployed or lazy or directionless. Um, and I don't feel it accurately reflects how, um, how difficult it is to be a working artist who supports oneself. And so I've sort of taken on that, that uh, word um, and trying to own it in a way. I always think back to when I started, I uh, started my clay career, I guess you'd say, that first, very first clay class. What I loved about clay <clears throat> was that it took all of my energy, all of my focus to make this, to get the clay centered and to pull up. Um, and I just love that. God, this clay is floppy, sorry. <laughs> um, and all of that focus and energy was, I had to, I never had anything that sort of made my mind quiet like that. That, that meditative quality that I think people relate to uh, meditation. Um, I really had that when I first started throwing is it took focus and energy that, and quiet in my brain and controlling my body. Um, and I, I just loved that and I fell in love with that practice. And so I really think that's sort of what propelled me forward. Um, now, of course, I can think about lots of things um, while I'm doing this because I've got sort of the, the rhythm down and my body knows how to do this thing. But for me now, it's like a, it is a way to slow down I think when you take a passion and you create a career out of that, um, you find out how much of that career is job-like. You know, I think when you're first going through, all you're doing is skill building and learning how to make, but then when you've reached a certain level and you're trying to make a career out of, say, being a potter, um, there's a lot of work that's entailed into that. The commitment to pursuing a passion and making that a successful career um, takes a lot of commitment in addition to um, I th think sometimes sacrificing the making part. I mean, often in my own practice, making is the last thing I actually get to do when it's really the, f the only thing I want to do. Um, so, but it's also, there's a, a balance to that. It's like, I couldn't just keep making. I just have closets full of work then. So to me, there is a inherent, especially with functional work, I want that work to be out in the world being used. I have a passion for people collecting pots in addition to making pots. So I tend to make some larger mugs. My mugs are pretty hefty in size. Um, I had someone once describe them as jeans and t-shirt cups. There's something about that, you know, I have a collection of mugs that's pretty intense and completely different. Every single one of them is very different. Um, but I do love a mug that's sort of rough and tumble and can roll around the back of my car without worrying about it too much. Um, and I kind of strive to make cups that I don't have to think about that I can sort of set down on the, on the table without really looking to set it down. I feel like that uh, the recovery part of it, the um, rolling with failures, I think I learned a lot about uh, loss when I started with clay. Um, it taught, taught me not to be attached to an object very quickly because at any moment it could be destroyed. And so I think I really do work on uh, being in that moment and making an object, but also, uh, it. and I'm always trying to get this across to students too, is that the more you make, the quicker you get, the better you get, that every time you make an object, um, you're learning something from that and not to get hung up or 
uh, discouraged, but it is very much just a part of the process. And weighing out my clay really helped me start to refine my forms and my shapes and get a consistency. Because a lot of what I try to do is, it's about emotional content and comfort and these ideas. And so there's not a, I don't have a rigid sort of plan for my cup, but they're, um, they all, I want them to kind of dance and have a grace to them that evokes like a, a need to touch. I don't really, start my daily practice with a mug. I start, if I have, if I've been away from the studio for some time, I will start with mugs because it just, there's a rhythm to it. There's a, um, you know, I have to come back and finish them. Um, and I think that that's really important is like that, because the hardest part is really getting started. And if I start with mugs, it's a quiet place to start. Um, and it's a well uh, rehearsed place for me to start. And I can sort of meditate on what I need to get done in the studio and how to move forward. And I really like my handle edge. When I attach a handle to come slightly above the, the lip. It's just a, something that I really like. Um, I think it's, I think one time I smashed a cup that had a handle by sticking it in the cover and I just smashed it into the wall because I didn't realize it had a handle. And so this for me is like I can see from wherever the cup is that it has a handle on it. And so for me it's just this weird little, um, just a tiny detail that um, is important to me. So I tend to pull sort of on the outside edge down the middle and to make sure I'm tapering it in slightly. And something I really try to do is I try to create handles that are different for every mug really. That will be a one finger, a two finger, three finger. But I'm really thinking a lot about mugs are a really intimate object and people develop very personal relationships with them. And, you know, not everybody's fingers are the same. And so I really do try to make them different so it doesn't just fit my hand, that it will fit a variety of hands. Um, because I know when I'm, when I'm mug shopping, I pick up 20 mugs before I find the right mug for me. And if that hand, it, it's all really contingent on the handle. But I'm really looking for that, that mug that fits me. I actually love getting pictures of pots in use. Um, and I don't really have one, I mean, there's a couple that stand out visually um, whenever anybody takes some time to sort of set up a shot. But often it's just, I love anywhere from them just taking it to a construction site and setting it on the frame of a house to them standing in a garden looking down at, you know, orange flowers with an orange mug full of tea. I think there's, you know, there's beauty in all of those moments. And I do just, I actually just love the notion that the mugs go out into the world with them. And they're, um, becomes part of their rituals. And a lot of times, you know, I get a lot of pictures from kids in the studio using mugs. Um, and that's, I love that they're kind of workhorse mugs. They're, they, there's a preciousness in, to them, but then also a, a durability that seems to resonate with people that I really appreciate and love that they choose to share that. <laughs>